everybody, welcome to the Horror Appraisal. I'm Sam. I'm Evan. This is another episode of the uh, 64 horror film face-off that we've got going on. This is bracket six. Right, we're, yeah, right, we're at bracket six. Uh, it's been pretty interesting. We've seen uh, some uh, some huge contenders that are going to be appearing in the final bracket. So far, the winners we've had for each bracket are Hellraiser, Nightmare on Elm Street, The Exorcist, Dawn of the Dead, and Evil Dead 2. So all those films will appear... Uh, actually, in the final bracket, we've had some uh, controversy in some of these, so we've had we're some gonna, upsets. We're gonna keep doing that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so right away, um, let's see, you went first on number one, and it's number six. It's even, so I go first this time. If you say so. All right, we're pulling out of this, and again, if you don't know the rules, watch the first one. Mm -hmm. What do we got? <sighs> Monster Squad, finally. <laughs> Monster Squad. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Monster Squad is such an awesome movie. All right, so we're going to have Monster Squad in round one of bracket six go up against. Oh, I can just feel it's gonna be bad. Tell me what it is. Oh my God. <laughs> Monster Squad is going to go up against. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. God, why? That is terrible. No, that's that's not fair. <laughs> oh. Well. I'll go ahead and argue you, for Monster Squad. You wanted to do this. So. Monster Squad is one of my favorite horror horror films from childhood. I watched it all the time. I rented the the crap out of it. Uh, just you know, I ruined the copy at the local rental store. It has uh, Stan Winston effects that make all the the classic Universal monsters. We reviewed this film for a long time. It's got our favorite Dracula in it. Uh, check out our review of it. That's that's all I'll say. The Goonies is nothing. People talk about the Goonies in pop culture. <laughs> well, the Monster Squad is like the Goonies if it was better. And more um, like like the cool kids. Yeah. That's going to be... The kids right. that cuss. The kids that yeah. aren't afraid to say controversial things. Like, yeah. Yeah. But, um, all right, well, so here we go. Monster Squad, one of my favorite films growing up, going up against the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. Yeah, what a beast of a film. Dude. Yeah. Directed, 87 versus 80, or from 87 versus 74. Directed by Toby Hooper. Now, the thing is with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it was such... Uh, it, it was a very original and unique film for its time. It really was a film that set the path for slashers, slashers that especially involved you know deranged families, which is kind of a subgenre unto itself now. It they, created it created insane brutality. Mm -hmm. And the thing is about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and, we, and, and everybody knows this, so we're not really saying anything that uh, cultured people and in, uh, in, in horror don't know, but. Texas Chainsaw Massacre achieved a brilliant level of violence, fear, and brutality. Terrorizing. Ter with showing almost no blood. Yeah. Brink of badness. There is no way that uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre gets beat on this one. The first time the first time I watched it and uh, with the first kill where you see Leatherface in full regalia <laughs> and he, the guy looks up and he's got the hammer and he bashes the guy real quick. And then he pulls him in, and then he just slams that door. That is uh, absolutely one of the most chilling and horrible things I've ever seen. Texas Chainsaw Massacre over Monster Squad. Are you happy? Are you happy? <laughs> By Monster, Monster Squad. Squad. Monster Squad was... <laughs> one of my favorite good. horror films. Yeah. But Monster... You made a point about another film earlier, and that is... Monster Squad pays homage to other things. Texas Chainsaw Massacre invented. is invented a certain type of subgenre for. In in my opinion, this is all opinion. So we're gonna have Texas Chainsaw Massacre went out over Monster Squad. That's up. Uh, <laughs> Your turn to draw. <laughs> you son of a bitch! I didn't even want to do this because, like, I don't want to. We have to, have to now. Not, yeah. Well, yeah. We're pretty deep into it now. <laughs> we're we're surf so far deep. Yeah. All right, so starting in round two of bracket six, we have Return of the Living Dead. Oh, God, I love Return of the Living Dead. God, what's it going to go up again? <laughs> I don't even want to guess. Oh, God. Zombie. Ah, that's ironic. That's pretty good. I mean, that's a good matchup. That zombie with an eye. 
Um, all right, so. Zombie 2. Yeah. Return of the Living Dead. 1985. Directed by... Uh, Dan O'Bannon. Yeah, sorry, I just drew a blank, and I know that's what he worked on Alien. Yeah, he was a writer for um, Alien. Return of the Living Dead is a really crazy film. Uh, it has a great atmosphere of I think you know '80s punk and everything else. It's got great special effects. It's got the indomitable Clue Gulliger in it, and he makes any movie fun. Uh, well, you have a great cast, man. Beverly Randolph, Lynn yeah. Quigley, Tom mm. Matthews, the guy that screams a lot. I, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. Don Calfa. Don Calfa. Uh, all the punks and stuff, uh, Jewel Shepard, we, like, you, you can go on and on and just name people. And the thing movie. is about Return of the Living Dead, it's just a really fun zombie film uh, that's got plenty of gore in it. And and it was one of those first kind of, like, zany zombie films. Punk rock zombies, man. Yeah, punk, and it was, it was a very, it was very, it was quite humorous, too. It was one of the first, now it seems like you can't shake a, you can't swing a cat by the tail in a room without hitting, like, eight, funny zombie films boy that i struggled through that um zombie 2 uh the italian uh Lu lucio fulgi's answer to dawn of the dead dawn of the dead and he felt like he did a good job it's a little pretentious to think that you can follow up dawn of the dead mm -hmm. however and, like I said, this was this film. was yeah this was a uh un this was not a um it's not official sequel. it's not it's an unofficial sequel to george romero's dawn of the dead but I will say there are certain things about Zombie 2. It's shot beautifully. Yes. It is extraordinarily violent and uh, kind of cringeworthy. Mm -hmm. Hey, zombie versus shark, man. Well, that, that scene is shot amazing. You got a shark trainer underwater dancing with a uh, with a shark. I mean, he got, he's dressed as a zombie. Yeah. And he's got meat on his arm, you know, letting yeah. the shark bite it. Let's not forget, too. The that. throat ripping out scene, the yeah. eyeball scene. Yeah, like, this has got a great eyeball gouging <sighs> in it. And man, that goes a long way in my book. Zombie 2, thus named because in Italy the name for Dawn of the Dead was Zombie. This was Zombie 2. So. That was because of Dario Argento's connections to the film. Yeah, so he, absolutely. Um, I think because of like pop culture and what it's done for, for mm. the genre, I think Return of the Living Dead is a better film. Just because of its tribute to EC Comics and just how colorful it is and just yeah. like what it's done. It's so enjoyable. A zombie, t or shoot, Return of the Living Dead is definitely more my type of atmosphere that I like. I like the spooky graveyard with the mist. I, I think of that as Halloween cemeteries and Halloween zombies. That's that's always been what I like a little bit better. Well, and it created a new type of zombie. Yeah. Like they're indestructible. Yeah, absolutely. They don't die. Mm -hmm. And they eat brains. Yeah, they need spicy brains. But... Zombie 2 is awesome. Yeah. Return so, of the Dead wins. I agree. All right. Make sure we pick a real doozy here. Night of the Living Dead. Whoa. What is bracket something in it? Bracket 6. It's going to go down, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Night of the Living Dead. Night of the Living Dead. Ooh. The original from 68. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's gonna go against Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Probably, well, it depends on what it's going against. Night of the Living Dead is going to go up against Nightbreed. I mean, I know what. Oh, I don't know. I don't. You know. go ahead and argue for Night of the Living Dead. I'm gonna argue for Nightbreed, just so you know. Night of the Living Dead created the zombie as mm -hmm. we know it—the flesh-eating zombie, the undead, the zombie that dies the person that dies and wakes up a flesh-eating monster uh george romero gave us stark contrasting black and white because it was the style he wanted and it was cheap not because it was popular at the time he broke ground with uh the themes in the film it was uh he made a black lead which was not something you had uh, in the character ben mm -hmm. um he just went with with it and made a terrifying film Although it should have been polished more and it could have been polished more. Personal opinion before you say anything about it. My opinion, I think Nightbreed's better. Go ahead and argue. You can't you can't just throw that out. So <laughs> Nightbreed, directed by Clive Barker, based upon his story, um Cabal. Cabal. Uh Nightbreed is about a man who finds himself 
entering another world of uh, sensation and uh, existence that he's never dreamt of before as he becomes one of these creatures and he eventually becomes their leader. And, it's like an ancient calling. Yeah, so it, it is. So forget the story for a second. Let's talk about the way the film is made. Oh, the, the makeup for Nightbreed is incredible. <laughs> uh, the movie has wonderful special effects that many, many people sweated and bled to probably create. I think it's got some of the best you know, makeup artistry. It's done on a massive I've scale. Ever dude. Seen. There's so many original ideas that come together. I will tell day. you right now. Like I said, this is. I can't remember. Are we arguing for what we are saying is the better film? I think better film. Or what we just enjoy better. Because I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes you have to. This, go is, you... this is going to sound like blasphemy, maybe. Blasphemy. I believe that Nightbreed is a better made film than Night of the Living Dead. Well, I think. <clears throat> Although Night of the Living Dead created the modern zombie, mm -hmm. it, it went, did. It went against voodoo, uh, and it's George Romero. George Romero himself would admit that there's flaws, and you know he did things that were better in Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead. Absolutely. Uh, Nightbreed is a better film. I, I, it's hard to deny that. It's amazing. The music was uh, Danny Elfman. Yeah. Um, you, it's just epic and grandiose. Not, and scale. not only is it a better film. Um, you know, it's it's a personally, I would rather watch Nightbreed. If you were to say right now, do you want to watch Night of the Living Dead or Nightbreed? I'd say Nightbreed. We love Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, I mean, we love it. Um, but yeah, there it is, Nightbreed. Woof. Your turn. I think a lot of people are going to be pissed about that. I don't know. I think if you saw Nightbreed and actually understood it, and mm -hmm. Phantasm. One of my favorite horror films of all time. God bless. This bracket. <laughs> wow. Part six. Phantasm's awesome. We met a lot of those people last year. Yeah. Evil Dead. The Evil Dead. <laughs> well, this actually seems very well suited for us to argue. <laughs> oh my God, go ahead. All right, well, here I go. My vote is going to be for Phantasm. Uh, and I will outline my reasons. Um, Phantasm created a created its own original characters. It's not a sequel slasher. It's not it's not a uh, formulaic slasher like you know eventually Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth films or even to a veritable degree Freddy films uh, got to be. Uh, Phantasm is a unique experience. Uh, it is you know. It's the tall man, of course, you know, it, it, I, I'm just taking it as read that you guys know what Phantasm is about. You know, Jason needs you to go camping. Freddie needs you to fall asleep. Michael Myers needs you to be related to him. The tall man, he just needs you. Uh, to me, there's something so sinister about that. And, you know, he's a man of few words. I think that, you know, that, that, that created just a, a very, very, Don Coscarelli did such a good job of, uh, taking these characters and, and putting them on film. The film's definitely a little dated now. Uh, I think it was originally 1977 or 78. Se 79? 79? Okay, late, it's 78 late, or 79. late 70s. Honest. But, uh, you know, I gotta tell you, Phantasm is an incredibly well-made film. What they achieved with the cinematography of it, what they did with uh, effects, um, you know, you've got that ball that's, you, you got that wonderful sphere of death that is... So simple, it's just yeah, a rat. That's it's a seeking, it's, with, it's like, it's like... It's the, a couple of aluminum... It's like a snitch, but... They, they cut a pop bottle and yeah. they made the little blades yeah. on it. Um, you know, Phantasm, it's, it, it's, it's also a little bit of an ambiguous film, too. You don't know exactly in the first one, you know, what yeah. the whole point of it is. Well, you don't figure that out in the other Yeah, two. really, but, but <laughs> I, Phantasm... There's something truly, truly scary to me about Phantasm. My vote is for Phantasm as the better film over the original Evil Dead. <clears throat> well, to go on your path, the Evil Dead created a new part of a created a new genre. Really. I knew you'd say that. Uh, it's not zombies. It's not purely demons. It's a little bit of both. Uh, you created a pop icon as well as a horror icon. A lot of times you create a pop icon and horror fans start hating it. You created a horror icon with this and horror fans still love him. And he's a, he's a very popular icon. He's got his own series now, Ash vs. Evil Dead. Bruce Campbell has not lost his luster. <laughs> Definitely not. The Evil Dead, 
uh, takes us to the brink of brutality with a rape scene in the woods where a tree is rammed into a girl's vagina. And that is <laughs> very, rather intense. Uh, you just don't see that. Uh, one of the most creative soundtracks I've ever heard. Um, brutal. Brutal. Chopping up your friends with an axe. Hit her, hit it. And, and, and you got this guy, Scotty. He's just... A, He's an ass, and he doesn't care. He wants to survive. Number one, no, he doesn't care. Like, my girlfriend, she was a friend of ours. She's dead. Shocking. Evil Dead is one of the most shocking films outside of Hellraiser to me. Uh, and its influence is immense. And it spawned movies that are just as good. And that you can't really say that about a lot of series. Uh, there is Nightmare on Elm Street is not as consistently good as the Evil Dead series. Uh, Halloween is not as consistently good as the Evil Dead series. None of those are. Evil Dead is kind of the king in that way, as far as consistency consistency goes. And that kind of goes on, on on Bruce. I gotta vote Evil Dead. Well, the thing is, you know, going back with that, you know, it, did Evil Dead create that iconic character? Yes, but no one gave a shit about that character until Evil Dead Two, when uh, you know he got a little bit cooler and everything else. I, I, listen, listen, I don't want to do this. I don't want this to ruin our friendship. <laughs> But Phantasm to me is a better made film. I don't know. It looks. I mean, here's the deal, and I'm not being a shithead. I'm not saying Evil Dead isn't a isn't a well made film. Which aspects are better? Is it I mean, the overall cinematography of it, the production quality, uh, the, the way it flows? I think the creativity is absolutely wonderful. Uh, you know, it, you know. Granted, Evil Dead is a film that takes place primarily in one location, um, and and you know what? That's tougher on some people sometimes. Um, I I think that makes the film do, really hard to do. What's our precedent supposed to be if we can't agree? I don't know. Um, do we have people vote? I don't know. Uh, and then we finish the bracket in an alternate video. Uh, bracket six continued. Um, Listen, I I I I'm speaking from my heart, and it's not to be difficult. Well, I love Phantasm. I prom I promise. I I, love I feel that Phantasm is a better film than Evil Dead. If we're not, if we're trying to take bias out of it and everything else, just think about the creativity behind the camera shots in Evil Dead. You know, hanging from the rafters. You can't, but you can't take that away from Phantasm as well. They have a comparable shot to being over the rafters and like. I mean, I I I, I can't compare you know cream of mushroom soup to peanut butter sandwiches. They're both good. Do you think Evil Dead is is better than Halloween? Do you think Halloween is better than Phantasm? Not necessarily. <laughs> I thought I had a good measure there. Yeah, uh, I know. I could tell I was going to disappoint <laughs> you. Do you think Evil Dead is better than The Thing? No. Do you think Phantasm is better than The Thing? Well, just because two things aren't as good as The well, Thing. I, I just wanted to see if The Phantasm was going to be as good as The Thing. Because I know that's your I measure. Just, yeah. Okay. Oof. That's tough. <laughs> You know, we said before we started this, let's get through this one quickly so we can go into the next one. You know, you make, I mean, you make a good argument that Phantasm is made cleanly. It's shot in a similar fashion to Halloween. Evil Dead probably cemented itself with a great sequel in Money. Sam Raimi did that with... Evil Dead was created over three years... Now, if we're going to say who did more with less, I'm going to give that to Sam Raimi. If, he, if we want to... If which we can, one shocked you more? If we, I mean, which one shocked me more? Well, see, that's not, that's not fair to do that. I'm still going to have to go with Phantasm, and here's why. Because I saw Phantasm when I was 7 or 8, so that was more shocking. If I saw Evil Dead when I was 12 or 13... What, it was, what was so shocking about Phantasm? I mean, I get what you're... I know what you're leading up to. I know What's what you're this, leading I mean, I know the dwarves to. are scary, but certainly they're... they're I know what you're leading me to... I love woods Phantasm. With Evil Dead and what was shocking, but uh, you know, it, it, like I said, it, I can, we can get by this. If, if, if I mean, this isn't a big deal for me to concede this. I do think that Evil Dead did more with less. I'll go with Evil Dead to move things on, but only under the pretense that we are saying that Evil Dead did more with less. Didn't have the budget. Didn't have the locations. It didn't have the. I can agree with that totally. Um, I don't like it. I mean, I'm not like pissed at you or anything. 
Well, this and is, I, this and is I don't creep, want you pissed at me. This is kind of like Creep Show versus Nightmare on Elm Street. This is actually worse than that. We we've, we've done worse. I've I've, I've, I've I, been I've been more of a bitch about this than, than I, I, I love Nightmare Two an awful lot, but yeah. So, so I gotta say Evil Dead. I mean, I and I think a lot of our viewers would probably say Evil Dead. I've, I've got that in mind too. No, I know that for a fact. There's a lot of you very loyal Phantasm fans out there. Well, I, I'm and a loyal Phantasm. Fan of course too. you are. I didn't mean that you weren't. I'm going we to go. Don I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Evil Dead in here as the winner over Phantasm, but I want to make it very clear that the only reason that I'm okay with this is that I do feel that Evil Dead did more with less. Consider this. But I don't necessarily consider that Evil Dead is a better made film than Phantasm. There's two comparable characters at least. Scott Scotty's character and Reggie Bannister. It's true. They're both <laughs> annoying as balls. I love Reggie Bannister though. He was awesome. Uh, we made fun of him a lot, <laughs> like his performance. But we met the guy. He's hilarious. He's mm. funny, and he's a great guy. So now we are down to the final four on bracket six. Yes, which is we're down to the semifinals. So semifinals. So we are going to have Texas Chainsaw Massacre versus Nightbreed. I think that's kind of an easy one. I think it is too. I, I think you. Can't, but let's hear it anyway. Texas Chainsaw Massacre uh, raped our senses, and it was not even a like you you couldn't view the uncut version in Britain until the late nineties. Yeah, like ninety nine. And I will say that's another example. If we're putting Texas Chainsaw Massacre up against Nightbreed, I think that's another example of a film that did more with less. Which uh, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, I think they both did equal amounts of, of more with what they had. Like, I mm -hmm. think Clive Barker um, accomplished something just insane with mm -hmm. Nightbreed. Like, the scale of it is ridiculous. The budget didn't want what he did. Uh, and we didn't get that originally. And when they fought to give us the director's cut recently, which is awesome. You should check it out. Yeah. But Texas Chainsaw Massacre... I mean, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm going to say, wins as better horror film over Nightbreed. Just for those reasons you gave. Uh, I also do feel it in my heart. Like I don't really have to fake that response. I, I, yeah. I think that's a better film. Uh, it's used in film classes and stuff. It's yeah, like, like, that's an incredible film that I that film gets my juices going. <laughs> it makes and, me sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> All right. So second round before the finals, uh, the second round of semifinals. Uh, Return of the Living Dead versus Evil Dead. Again. Uh, I want to. I want to just totally screw with you on this and say it's Return of the Living Dead, just over. over. There's been so many times though you've argued Return of the Living Dead not as good as other films. I know. But I'm just doing it. <laughs> I because, know better. I yeah, know better. Yeah, my heart wouldn't be in it. You'd know I was effing Man, with you. I, I know how much you love the Evil Dead, though. I mean, I do love Evil. Yeah, Dead. I know you love it a lot. Uh, Evil Dead wins this in my book. Me too. Just because it's it's so crazy. It's, if it's Evil Dead versus Return of the Living Dead. While one is still, they're both very iconic films, but I'd watch. I, I'd watch both of them probably equally too. Five out of of ten times, I'd watch. I them. think I would watch Evil Dead maybe six out of ten times. Depends on the year. Return, yeah, it depends on the year. <laughs> Those things change uh, as we get older. Yeah, but yeah, so it looks like Evil Dead versus TCM. So for the final of bracket six, we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre versus Evil Dead. I still gotta go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I am too. Okay, I was gonna say, you know, I, I fought and fought and fought to have Phantasm beat. Uh, Evil Dead just a few minutes ago. Well, if it come if it had come down to Phantasm and Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'd still have to go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, of course. You know, I'm trying to not just say because something is an iconic film, it wins. We know for a fact that just because something's an iconic film, it doesn't win. We had Evil Dead Two beat out Psycho. So yes, we did. And I still haven't. I still don't know how mad people are about that. But um, we got one down vote so far. <clears throat> I saw that. Um, but it's fine, though. People have their opinions. You know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the discomfort that I feel that all those performers had to have been feeling, I think, really kind of radiates in that whole movie. Like, to it me, projects, like... projects, dude. Yeah. Like, you're there with them. Yeah. They, they, and I think part of that is because the camera literally gets, like, inside an eyeball. <laughs> like, well, we're there. Also, like, too, I do find Texas Chainsaw Massacre a more frightening film than Evil Dead, just because... You know, one is more fantasy, the other could take place in a grittier, dirtier reality, you know, with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Because after all, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was based on a couple of real life people, you know, such as Ed Gein and uh, other people who committed horrible murders and did things with skin. Yeah. So, anyway, we had what? T TCM yeah. beating Texas Monster Chainsaw Squad? Massacre uh, is, our over uh, is our overall winner, overall winner of bracket six. It beat out Monster Squad, Return of the Living Dead, Zombie 2, 
Night of the Living Dead, Nightbreed, Phantasm, and Evil Dead. I gotta say, more great films were in bracket six than any other bracket. Boy, yeah, it like, really was. And, you know, we, we are good friends arguing over sometime, Evil Dead. Yeah, sometimes. Arguing <laughs> over, over Evil Dead 2 and Phantasm. That's, you know, these are th conversations we have on the couch watching TV. Yeah. Uh, now we get to put it to good use and let you guys know. Yeah, great use. Noble use. <laughs> <laughs> All right, TCM will be going off against the others pretty soon. Yep. I'm Sam. I'm Evan. Enjoy. See you later. Bye-bye. Oh, my God.